Today we're going to look at the Bandit Pacer. It currently sells for $11.99. Use coupon code TRUTHER for an additional $100 off. This bike will be at select dealers in Bellflower, Long Beach, and Redondo Beach, so you can get actual hands-on service if you need any help. Bandit will be opening a showroom in the near future. So the Bandit Pacer is an e-bike with conventional wheels, and let's go over what it offers. Starting off at the bottom, we have 180 millimeter rotors with hydraulic disc brakes. This is a light, and here is a shock system, which is good for about three inches of travel. These are 26 inch Chaoyang tires with nice reflectors and additional reflector right here. And these are plastic fenders. You have a neoprene cover to cover these wires. These are zoom handlebars. These hand rests are nice grippy rubber. Here's the control panel and look at this LCD, nice and colorful and it requires a key card to get in, you see? So that's how you unlock the bike, otherwise you're not going anywhere. Here's the reflector and the controls right here. And it's highly informational. Trip time, average speed, trip distance, range, and a future app will be available. Here's the bell, half throttle with the palm rest over here. Shimano seven speed shifter. The brake handles are slightly shorter if you haven't noticed. And that's because of the hydraulic brakes. This is high pressure. You don't need a long lever. This is a 48 volt, 14.5 amp hour battery. It does not require a key to stay in when you're riding. However, if you want to take it apart, then you have to unlock it. And this is a cool thing about this key. Check this out. It folds, which is pretty nice. And you just turn it, comes out nice and clean. These are conventional plastic. This is the kickstand, which is sturdy and adjustable. The 180 millimeter rotors. This is the luggage rack, which is good for 25 kilograms. Bike seat clamp, which is nice and sturdy. Here's the rear light, and it comes with braking action, as you can see. The rear light and the light system in general doesn't have to be on in order for the brakes to work. You see right here, it still lights up. Here's the rear seat. It has this little groove and the groove, I believe it does improve in the seating comfort. These are robust mounting points right here for accessories and back here as well. USB charger, USB-A and up here. This is a USB-C port, so you can charge your Android phone and in the future, I'm sure Apple phones will have it too. All right, time for our speed test of the 500 watt Bandit Pacer. All right, pedal assist zero. There is no speed, no throttle, no juice. However, one and beyond, it's going to be full speed. I mean, just this is throttle only. Sorry about that. All right, the thing is that the gauge is fairly accurate. And the max should be around 20. There you go. 20 miles an hour. All right, we are at pedal assist one. And we're just gonna see what level, I mean, what speed it gets. And we're just gonna go to ghost pedaling, okay? Try to ghost pedal at the lowest speed. So it doesn't seem to help much. Nine miles an hour. Pedal assist two. It stops right here, so 12. Pedal assist three. Fifteen. Pedal assist four. Eighteen. Five is sport mode already. And 22. And now, pedal six, six, this is the final. Should be able to hit 28. And um, 
probably not a good idea with ghost pedaling so we'll go all the way speed 7 yeah you definitely have to pedal yourself to 28 and, but it feels good it's quite comfortable there you go 28 miles an hour So, yes, you do have to pedal a bit hard to get to that full 28. So if you have to, sure, you can do it. But comfortably, it's going to be around, you know, 23 would be comfortable. Because at, at these speeds, you really don't want to be pedaling hard. Because uh, it can get kind of sketchy. All right. Next up, we'll go over riding impressions in different terrain. Let's have a look. All right, we are at the park. Let's see how this thing goes. I'm going to keep it slow just because there's people here and it can't really go super fast on these off-roads. It's quite smooth. That front fork surely does a job. Let's uh, give it a little bit more juice. So that throttle goes all the way. There's no limit to it. You go to top speed with it. Here's the bump. So the back, <laughs> you definitely got to get up. But the front does absorb quite a bit. And let's go in the grass. Yeah, feels good here. Yeah, uh, these taller tires definitely help. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is deep grass. And this, my foot is getting all over the place. So the grass performance is quite good. And I wasn't expecting that. Look, I'm only going nine. Uh, pavement, of course, is no problem. But I like to cut through grass if I can. Yeah, so... Uh, quite a smooth ride. Yeah, that was nice. Okay, this is going to be a, a bit difficult to illustrate or show. Uh, when you're pedaling and you're on these low eco levels and the pedal assist kicks in, you know, unlike most bikes, this thing kicks in according to, to the level. What I mean is that at uh, eco one or two, the kick in is very gentle the power feeding something like electric they might give you like a full boost of energy and so that's something that uh, it's a bit easier if it's eased in like this but if you are in sport mode yeah it will it will kick a lot more energy all at once so if you're just coasting in the park you know it might be best to just keep the eco level to one or two. Do you know how to turn on the bike? Not sure yet. Maybe that button? Let's try. <laughs> no, it's, it's this one. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the button. Put like this? Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> this is cool. Okay, get on. Okay. And then go for a test ride. Do you want to get on right here? How far, how, like, um, how fast it can go? It can go pretty fast. It goes 20 miles on throttle and it goes 28 if you're pedaling really ha hard. Okay, so let me try slow and then go fast all I can. Let's see how it works. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Okay, so I just... Oh, you have to, um, it's not going to power on until you put on level one. So hit okay. plus. Okay, plus. 
So that's level one, okay? And then I just go, wow. <laughs> Look. Oh my gosh. So can you help me, uh, like, show me how to set up again? Yeah. Okay, set, just click here. Yeah, you don't have to. All you have to know is up. Look, up. level one. And then two, two three, three, four, four five, five, and six. Sport. Sport is like super fast, okay? Okay, so one is lowered. Yeah, one is, so, but when you put the throttle, it's always gonna be super, the fastest. When you pedal, then it's gonna okay. be slower. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's try level one first. Oh yeah, you could just okay. do whatever you want, Ooh. right? <laughs> this. Ooh. Wow, wow, this wow. is a cool bike. Was it too fast for you or is it too tall? What do you think about it so far? I just try a first level. It's okay for me. But um, how, how about the height? Is it too tall for you or uh, is it tall enough? What do you think about it? It's just that? enough. I can uh, touch my feet to the floor like that. It's okay. I fi I'm five feet tall. It's okay. okay. In the scenario where the seat is too high, you can actually lower this an additional inch and a quarter because look how long this is. You can just trim the end with a pipe cutter. Okay. And is the power assist, I mean, is the level fast? The throttle? Uh, when you, no, when you it's okay. It? I think it's good. Good. What about the, you only use level one where you pedaling? No, I just, uh, yes, I just uh, you uh, level one. And it's kind of uh, fast? good, good, <laughs> fast good. Enough yeah, fa fast enough for you. First, I am um, kind of scared, but when I like uh, feel like you just try a little bit, you will feel it comfortable. But I I didn't try the the highest level yet. Maybe it like <laughs> a really Too much speed, for you. <laughs> really <laughs> speed. Okay. Next up, the fifteen percent grade hill test. All right, we're going throttle only, and I'm going to turn the pedal assist all the way to six. And we're gonna see how fast we can go, all right? This bike goes 20 miles an hour on throttle only. Right now we're at 9.8, 11, okay. And I do think it's gonna make it, but we'll see. We won't know until we know. All right, here's the steep part. We're at 10, 9, 8, 6, Four. Oh man, this thing is uh, <laughs> getting a little, little bit iffy. Three. Let's see if I lowered the throttle so it could make it or not. Nope. That is about it. Okay, that's about it. We're gonna go down to the sidewalk before I coast down. Now, interesting enough, this thing feels like it has a lot of power, but uh, it's towards the mid end. So I was surprised that it didn't make it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, because of the way it failed, I'm gonna put this to gear four. Okay, now we're doing throttle pedal assist all the way. Okay, I'm gonna go up speed because I could go faster than that. Up uh, here, steep. So we had a, up to 17, but I had to drop down because it's slowing down. And, and this feels good right here. I am at 10. And with the seven speed shifter, I can shift down to speed two and just maintain an easy nine. All right. So there you go with 
pedal assist, it does help quite a bit. Up next is the brake test, hydraulic brakes with skinny tires. How will it behave? Let's find out. Okay, let's get up to speed and then we'll stop. So this is max speed that I'm trying to get to there. And I should be stopping right about here. <laughs> Hope that was in the frame. It took a bit of time. An earlier moment caused a problem in my testing. This was actually a very hard bump that I ran into. And I almost didn't even feel it because of the front shocks. This caused the rear tire to have a small leak, so I had to repair it before testing the brakes once again. Three, two, one, zero. Wow. That didn't change much. And the reason why it didn't break all the way was because at 20 miles an hour, going to a full stop with a hard depression, you're going to be skidding around the place. I would not recommend it. If you're going to be using the brakes full throttle, full force, I would only go up to 23 and I think that's the sweet spot for this bike. Don't try to go it too fast because the wheels aren't really made for that type of speed. Going back a bit, let's do a brief breakdown of the assembly. The box comes wrapped. The bike is neatly tucked inside and I think it's packed very well. All right, check this out. The tools that it comes with, all right. It is pretty sweet. Check out these out. I mean, you get these wrenches that are two-sided thick. They're real wrenches that you can use for whatever purpose you need. What's so special is that it's a small thing, but look at this. Nice, fat, six millimeter screws. So the full assembly includes the front wheel, the fender, the pedals, the light, and the handlebars. It's quite easy. Next up, we'll have a look at the size. The front wheel comes apart. However, it's not quite short enough to fit in sideways you'll still have to go the full length if you have like a minivan or a small truck and it's better just to keep the wheels on at that point not all is lost because it's a skinny tire and the battery comes apart you can fit it on some bus rails they do allow that in some areas 16 miles of testing so far and I still got some range left. So I'll be writing out the rest of it right now. And there is something very interesting about this display and I'll go over it after I deplete the battery. So let's do this. Okay, it says I have 13 miles left. Let's complete it. This thing has 23 miles already. I've ridden it 23 miles. But it gets to a tendency when it gets low is that it is gonna give you a false reading. If I throttle way too much, look, I'm gonna ghost pedal to force it. I guess it's try to deplete itself. Stop sign. I just wanna say that the brakes, they work pretty good normally outside of that test, the really hard test, around 25 miles per hour, whatever, below that it's fine. Uh, but look, I'm gonna try to deplete this. I'm gonna ghost pedal just so that the throttle is like going full blast. See that it just dropped to 10% and it was at 21%, now it's at 10 and it doesn't give me a range reading. So just keep that in mind when you're, you're going and you're approaching the end of the battery, it might give you a false reading. And continuing on, I'm just gonna finish this off. 
should be able to get 29 miles. Who knows? You don't know until you know, right? So, continuing on. See, it popped back to 18%. All right, I've gone almost 29 miles and I have half a mile left. I don't have enough to make it back. And if you haven't noticed, I've been mentioning that I have a certain amount of range left and most e-bikes, they tell you how much that you've gone, but they don't tell you how much they have left. And this one does, and it's the range. And it's so great having that peace of mind knowing how much you have left and this range you know i'm on sport level six so if i have half a mile left if i'm going full throttle but check this out if i'm going to uh actually if i'm going to change my speed to eco mode say i use one now i'm up to 0.7 so it means that if i want to go further i would use an eco mode and not only that, I don't have to guess. It is clearly stated right here that I have 0.7 miles left in this eco mode. Of course, it's not gonna go as fast as the sport modes, but there you go, that is the range. You can expect around 29 miles, throttle only. If you go to eco mode, I believe it'll give you 35 miles. Sport mode was around it was right at 26 and it gave me around 29 there it is before i charge i'm gonna let it cool off a little bit and let's weigh this battery 14 amp hour battery 14.5 and it weighs eight pound 14 ounces or roughly four kilograms and this charger is ul listed and that is crazy because I just had a charger catch on fire yesterday. And there's the battery you all listed. I couldn't tell if it is. I'll let you know in the comments below. All right, this is two amps, 14.5. So roughly seven hours to charge. And just to show off this side right here, this USB should be a fast charger, making it the world's largest battery bank barely big enough for my wife and her facebook browsing <gasps> final thoughts the bandit pacer was a delight to ride as a cruiser at the beach as a cruiser at the park as a commuter in the streets the long battery life along with the predictable range and all necessary safety accessories makes this bike worthy for serious land travelers its sturdy aluminum frame, smooth pedal assist system, and responsive hydraulic brakes makes it a pleasure to ride both on and off-road. The bike's moderately comfortable saddle, ergonomic handlebars, and adjustable seat posts ensure a comfortable fit for riders of all sizes. Overall, I think the Bandit Pacer offers a solid value for its price point, and it's definitely worth considering if you're in the market for a conventional wheeled e-bike. The drawbacks include possibly being too fast for its brake system and it's a strong hydraulic brake system, no less. It's just that the wheels can only handle so much. On the flip side, this e-bike does feel especially smooth at 20 to 23 miles per hour. It feels effortless and sturdy at those speeds. The display is spectacular and there will be a future app integration. The adjustable front forks flatten out the road quite a bit. The color is beautiful in my opinion, and the overall style is great. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this review helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. See you in the next one. Take care.